for step one, we first calculate A from the current density J, and we're going to use this equation given here. Let's substitute values into this expression. If we assume that the cross-sectional area of the dipole is S, then we can say J, vector phasor, is here in the z hat direction, and it's I naught over S. And then dz prime is, we're going to integrate over the dimensions of the dipole. So this is going to be S times dz. And so in other words, the triple integral turns into a single integral along z, along its length. And that's because we're assuming the current is constant within the interior of the dipole. And lastly, since a Hertzian dipole is so short, we're, we can approximate all the current as being right at the origin instead of within a very tiny short distance of the origin. So in other words, we're going to say R prime is about equal to just R, which comes straight from the origin rather than R prime. Oh, yeah, you can see it right here, R prime, which would come from our infinitesimally short segment of the dipole being a little bit off from the origin. Plugging all these into the expression, we're going to get mu naught over 4 pi, our single integral from L over 2 to L over 2, z hat i naught e to the minus j k r over s r and times s dz. So now we can pull out the z, uh, the, z, the z hat and actually this whole thing, we can pull this whole thing out because it doesn't change with z and we can cancel the s. Then we have z hat mu naught over 4 pi i naught e to the minus j k r over r and we have integrate from minus L over 2 to L over 2, just 1 dz. So after getting, performing the integral, this is going to just turn into L. Now at this point we can notice that our solution includes a mix of both Cartesian, z hat, and spherical coordinate terms, r, r versus z hat. Spherical coordinates is easier to use in this case because the radiation from the Hertzian dipole is going to be propagating radially away from the dipole. So let's convert z hat here at the beginning to spherical coordinates so we have consistency. Converting z hat to spherical coordinates, we're going to plug in, instead of z hat, we're going to say r hat cosine theta minus theta hat sine theta. So using that, we're going to plug that in at the beginning of A, and then we can write out A, we can separate out the three components that we're going to get. We're going to get an r hat component, a theta hat component, and a phi hat component, although that one turns out to be zero. So here we've separated out the two, the, the three different terms. And at this point, we've finished step one of path two. So this uh, right here is what we have from the previous slide. And so to calculate, to complete step two of path two, we're going to plug these into our expressions for solving for H and E. And I'm not going to focus on the details of carrying out those operations, but this is what we end up with. So physically, let's consider what we have. We have a magnetic field that's only oriented in the phi hat direction, which makes sense because our magnetic field generated by the dipole is expected to circulate around the dipole in the phi direction. And the electric field generated by the dipole is only oriented in the radial direction and the theta direction. In these three expressions, there's no phi term anywhere, and that's because our solution has azimuthal symmetry. It doesn't change with phi. And that makes sense because the dipole itself is also symmetrical with phi. So in these expressions, the r, every time you see an r and a theta, that's describing where our observation point is relative to the dipole at the origin. We have i naught, which gives us, which is the magnitude of the current in the dipole. 
L is the length of the dipole, K is 2 pi over lambda, and eta naught right here is just for free space. Now we can use these three equations to solve for the electric and the magnetic fields over all distances from the radiating dipole. But engineers like to find ways to use simplified expressions whenever possible so we don't have to use the full expressions every single time. Take a look at these equations. In what way do you think we could simplify these expressions?